Hey everyone, this is Mason Hutchison and you're listening to Herb Rally, your daily herbal podcast. We come out with new episodes about five days a week, so be sure to tune in often. Our goal for the show is to help you along your herbalist journey no matter what stage you're at. We have over 592 episodes, so feel free to peruse those episodes and you're bound to find something of interest. Today's episode is a snippet from an interview I did on Mel Mutterspa's podcast. It's called The Herbalist's Path. Uh, Me and Mel go way back. I've known her for years. We used to work at, uh, well, we used to attend various herbalism conferences as well as natural food trade shows and whatnot. Uh, But yeah, it's been really cool to see the success of uh, her tea company, which is called Mountain Mel's. You've probably heard of it at an REI near you. Uh, But she's also got herbalism courses and whatnot in her area called the Herbalist Path. And she is recently coming out with a, a course called Medicine Making Mamas. So it's available for a limited time, and she's basically teaching you how to make lots of different herbal medicine products for general use in your household. Uh, But yeah, she goes in-depth on it. If you want to check out Medicine Making Mamas, I will leave a link to that in the show notes. I will say that link is an affiliate link, which basically just means if you enroll in her course, Herb Rally does receive a small commission for that. Uh, But you're not paying anything extra. You're just helping support Herb Rally. So thank you so much. Oh, and I should mention she hooked up Herb Rally with a discount code. If you use coupon code HERBRALLY10 at checkout, you'll save 10% on the medicine making course. So again, uh, use coupon code HERBRALLY10 at checkout to save 10% on medicine making mamas. Oh, and also one more thing. Uh, This is available for a limited time, so keep that in mind. If this sounds of interest to you, check out medicine making mamas, limited time. Uh, Leave a link to that in the show notes. Also, before we get into the show, I want to read yet another five-star written review in Apple Podcasts, and this one is written by Celine Runewolf, and they say, informational and enticing. Love this podcast. Very informative, and Mason's voice is wonderful to listen to while traveling to work. If you are even slightly interested in herbalism and gardening, this is the podcast for you. Uh, so thanks for the compliment about my voice. I, I have, I'm struggling a little bit here because I got a new mic, and I can't really, I don't really feel like I've gotten it dialed in yet, not to mention I'm recording in the back of the truck now on a regular basis. So uh, if you want to let me know, it sounds fine. You could email me, mason at herbrally.com. But I feel like I liked my last mic a lot more, but it just kind of uh, crapped out on me. Pardon my French. Uh, But yeah, so anyways, hopefully the the voice and the sound quality in these intros is still... But yeah, thank you, Celine Runewolf, for that uh, sweet compliment. And I think it's cool that you included gardening in there, too, because, yes, there is actually, over the past 592 episodes, there actually is uh, some episodes about gardening, herbal gardening and whatnot. So I uh, also wanted to let you know that I will be starting to release the Herbalist Hour podcast episodes on this very podcast. Uh, if you're not aware, on our YouTube channel, I released our first two Herbalist Hour podcast episodes, and I have not actually released it on the podcast feed itself yet. So uh, on our YouTube channel right now, we have Ji Ling Lin, uh, Sonia Yamaguchi, who's a children's herb book author I just uh, interviewed two days ago. And then I actually interviewed Chanchel Cabrera today. Uh, Haven't released that on YouTube yet, but it's coming very soon. So uh, really excited to actually be interviewing people. It only took me six years of the podcast to start interviewing people. Uh, I thought I was going to be a lot more nervous, but really once, once you get going in the interview, it's, it's pretty fun. So if you don't have a podcast yet, you should definitely start. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned for the Herbalist Hour on the Herb Rally podcast. We'll probably start releasing those somewhat regularly. I'm trying to get a bunch of interviews while I'm here in Oregon. That said, the last two interviews I did were on Zoom, but that's all good, so... Anyways, if you made it this far in the intro, thanks so much for being a listener. If you'd like to support the podcast or Herb Rally in general, consider becoming an Herb Rally Schoolhouse member. Uh, you can learn more at herbrally.com slash schoolhouse, and you could get your first 30 days for free with coupon code podcast, and then it's only $10 a month after that. So a huge shout out and thanks to all of our Schoolhouse members, and thanks to you, dear listener, for listening to this episode. Enjoy this snippet from the Herbalist Path podcast with Mel Spa. All right, talk to you later. Bye. A little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. The content in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to cure, diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. This information has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. We are not doctors, nor do we play one on the internet. Please seek advice from a qualified healthcare professional. Okay, MC Calico, take it away. Yeah. 
smoking herbal blends. We need some mullin and some kush, my brethren. While listening to Herb Rally podcast again. Herbalism at its finest with Mason Hutchinson. Yeah. So I do, you know, I, I talk to a lot of mamas these days and that's kind of right. my focus is helping more moms use plants as medicine. And one of the things like I was saying that I hear a lot is like, what herb do I take for this? And that's where the nutrition piece comes into play. But you're not a mama. <laughs> you're totally a dude and you I'm a dada. Are, you are a dada and and I love that too because I think one thing I can resonate with and that I've heard from some of my my new mamas and apothecary mamas are like well my husband's not so onto it or he thinks I'm a little cuckoo for wanting to do this stuff and like one of the first times I really got to connect with you was at Brighton Bush when our daughters were playing, um, Mills and Anira were right. playing. And ever since right. then, I was like, oh, cool. You know, so I'd love to hear just a little bit about your life as a dad and a dad who uses plants as medicine. Yeah, I've got a, a few things to say about this. Um, <clears throat> so. It's interesting. I almost feel as if my goal of being an herbal dad is uh, to have Amelia take this lifestyle almost for granted, which is a weird thing to say. Uh, but I want her to kind of grow up, pursue her own passions, do her own thing, and uh, just kind of have herbalism or, you know, the whole nutritional aspect of it just be like everyday life. And then she could pursue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Roots. It's uh, the, 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 you know, I want to pursue her art or, you know, whatever she's really passionate about. Uh, and then just, you know, she uses herbs in the kitchen and whatnot, or herbs for healing and, and whatnot. So I think I've actually done a pretty good job of that. Um, she, uh, Amelia, for, re for the audience's reference, she's 11 now. Um, and yeah, so uh, actually, just the other day, we were, uh, um, we were making herbal chocolate um for this book that's going to be put out by molly meehan uh, it's called the kids herbalism book it's it's going to be super cool but uh but yeah like this is the type of stuff i want to do i want to like show her herbs in the kitchen and make it fun and, and whatnot and um yeah so we just made a we made a goji berry pistachio chocolate and it was super wow. easy super delicious <laughs> and uh you know obviously fun and delicious for her as well um uh but yeah so so yeah, I'd say uh, have Amelia take it for granted, but did you have any input on that before I keep rambling? No, I love it. Cause I, 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 I like that perspective of like taking it for granted. Like, yeah, I, I, I think that my <laughs> daughter does a little bit, but now she's watching me like teach these classes. And I think she's starting to be like, Oh, what mm -hmm. my mom's doing is like really something. She's a superhero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, she, has obviously been immersed in it as well like she's yes. got a healing nature about her that little girl yeah. may not know it but like she is full-on healer and and nurturer so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in her life and of course I think like most parents we want to see them well I guess there's parents that really push their kids to like nope you've got to be a doctor you've got to be a lawyer like all that totally junk now I'm all about like what are you into and yeah um <clears throat> so yeah I love the way you you made that as if she like takes it for granted because it is it's her roots it's her life that's like a given duh who doesn't use herbs <laughs> <laughs> I have know? a strong suspicion she's not going to be a clinical herbalist someday uh you know it's very possible but I, I don't think that's going to be her path right that said at the same token she loves to cook and you know like being with her in the kitchen is super fun and you know maybe she'll go something with that route but like um, I don't, I don't think she needs to pursue herbalism for me to be like proud of her or whatever, you no. know what I mean? Um, yeah. so, you know, on the other hand though, I've always been a bit, big advocate of, um, making her try foods that she doesn't particularly find appetizing at the time, even in small amounts. I don't force her to eat full plates of weird stuff, but I ask her to always try bites. So at this point in her life, she has an extremely accepting palate, um, which is cool. You know, now yeah. we can take her out for various different types of food and she's all about it. She likes trying new stuff. And the other thing on that note, I was going to say is I'm always, you know, earlier I was mentioning herbal infusions. I'm always making 
herbal infusions, these strong decoctions, and I'll get her like a little like half glass. I'll be like, take this, you know, it's, it's obviously always like nourishing in nature as opposed to like say medicinal. Um, but, um, yeah, she's always consuming oat straw infusion and whatnot. So <laughs> yeah, oat straw. That's one of your that's your jam, huh? That's my jam. Those Straight oats. <laughs> Tell us why. And and if you want to bring Mills into the picture of your your love of oats, please do. Yeah. Uh so oat straw in particular, as opposed to say milky oat tops, oat straw, a strong oat straw infusion is something that I it's it's kind of like um I'd probably say it's my daily tonic of choice. I I probably consume it four to five days a week. Um do do you think your audience knows how to do it, make it, or should I kind of run through? Please tell them. Okay. So court mason jar or canning jar, and then you throw <laughs> in... <laughs> it's a mason jar all the way. <laughs> um and I know it's probably blasphemy, but like a lot of people are probably tell you you have to measure exactly this amount, but I'm more of like the folk method. Uh, so a few tablespoons of dried herb, in this case, oat straw, and then um, pour, you know, fill it with uh, boiling hot water, stir it in, and then you can throw some sort of cap on there if you want. And I always do this at night, and then I just let it infuse overnight. And then in the morning, I use a, I actually use a sprouting screen as opposed to like, you know, a I don't know what people will use cheesecloth or whatever. I just use a sprout screen and I balance it on the wall and I let it just fill the other Mason jar. Um, and then boom, you got your nourishing herbal infusion of uh, oat straw. Um, the reason I like to take it is because I could feel it in my body, how nourishing it is. Uh, I know that it's full of minerals, vitamins and so on. Uh, the, the, the other thing that I like about it is I don't find it to be either stimulating or, uh, too calming it's like very neutral for me um it also gives it does give me although i said it's not energizing per se like say a caffeine it does give me like this vigor or like this uh strength feeling and i i could i could definitely feel it even though it's kind of like a kind of a neutral herb i, I suppose uh, do you have any thoughts on that i do feel that it's pretty neutral i have a few people yeah. that make it that say they feel really grounded with that herb yes <clears throat> Um, I, I love hearing about how it's so nutritive and my thoughts about like why you get that energy is because your body's like, thank you for all that glorious nutrition. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I need that. <laughs> this is a crucial piece of it all. So yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on that. As I listen to you talk about it. I, I also love the sprout screen. I think I saw that on one of your YouTubes or something. Um, and I was like, genius <laughs> like yeah. that is straight brilliant yeah. uh, i never thought of that and i still haven't ever gotten myself one but that's just do it <laughs> but I, I do like i've got some i've got so many different apparatus right. for tea straining at this moment in life yeah. so <laughs> yeah. I, I know somebody was like sending me oh it was a i got this mug as a gift from my brother from a clay artist out of eugene because my brother lives in Junction City, actually. Um, and they got me this cool mug many years back for Christmas. And in 2016, I did an Instagram photo of me with the mug and I was all stoked with it. And this woman just like two weeks ago was like, oh, I'm so glad to see this picture. And it was the artist. <laughs> like wow six years later <laughs> awesome I was like that's one of my favorite mugs I lost the <laughs> insert to it she's like oh really like I can send you another and I'm like the last thing I need right now is more things to infuse tea with <laughs> so <laughs> um <laughs> so I declined the offer but I would sure. definitely love to share people share with people her work because it was amazing um but the sprout screen thing still, I mean, that's going to be really helpful when you're infusing herbal oils or if you just don't want the mess of cheesecloth all over the place. And yeah, nice. Yeah. I love it. It's a little hack that I claim to have made up, but I'm sure a million other people thought about it. But yeah, every morning you'll see like on our kitchen wall, like the two mason jars perfectly balanced while the liquid is straining. I'm sure with like, say, a, a cheesecloth or whatever, you could squeeze more of the nutritional goodness out. But I just... You, you know, can give an extra so, press in the end. Yeah, you know? It's so convenient. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Convenience so. can be really a big piece to all of this. So I'm like, oh, wait, I had other questions on oats and I want to hear you talk more about oats. Um, but convenience, 
Yeah. Is a big thing, especially when you're a parent because uh, life's busy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. the more we can make things really simple and easy, the better off we are, right? Yeah. Um, I totally want to hear you talk about oats more, but before we do, would you be cool with explaining to the audience about oats? Because maybe they're thinking they're just eating a pot of oatmeal. Yeah, actually. Um, so for Rosalie's podcast, I did this 30 day challenge uh, where for 30 straight days, I did a um, oat straw infusion, uh, oat top extract, uh, oatmeal. And then I did a Robin Rose Bennett's uh, oat, a Vena Sativa oat straw meditation. <laughs> so none of that's required, but I will say yeah, like <laughs> the different um, plant parts are going to have the different constituents and effects. So uh, as I mentioned, I've, I've not always, but for the longest time I've done oat straw infusion, uh, but it was really nice and actually oatmeal too. Uh, so this is all the same plant, right? It's all, yeah, exactly. So it's all a Vena Sativa. Uh, my understanding is oatmeal is like the, the, the dried and pressed seed head or ripe seed head. I'm probably butchering that. I don't either way. And then the oat straw is like the dried grassy aerial parts. Uh, but the oat top is like the um, unripe uh, seed head. And it's got like this milky latex substance in, in there. Um, and that's where like these calming nervine properties are. And that's where like the real magic is. Like it was fun to do. I bring up the 30 day challenge because it was fun to experiment with these different parts and like feel these effects. Um, and so, and so working at mountain reserves, I always had access to these different tinctures and whatnot. And I would take oat top extract here and there. Uh, but I didn't take it tonically over the course of a, you know, a period of time. So, so I know it was really beneficial for my nerves to be taking these, uh, uh, this oat top extract. Um, also, I don't know if everyone resonates with oatmeal, um, but like, I know my body does. I've eaten it since I was a kid. So that was like nothing foreign to me, but, um, so yeah. Um, yeah, you got your different parts and I, it was fun to like holistically include all of that into my diet and nervous system. I heard that interview on Rosalie's oh. podcast and I love that you did that. Um, and I want to just take a moment because I'm, I'm teaching a lot of moms that are kind of new to the world of herbalism, which is great. And what I love that you did here was a full 30 day deep dive with one herb. Yeah. And I'd love to hear if you have thoughts or anything on that. Um, I love that idea. Um, and I think it's really important to feel the physiological effects that one plant might have on your body. It's really interesting to go from say an oat straw infusion to a nettle infusion. So for me, I keep telling people this, I'm like, if I take, oats, or I'm sorry, nettle infusion too late in the evening, I will have genuine insomnia. Like I won't be able to sleep. I'll be so energized from that. And there's something about that plant that just keeps me up. Um, and it's hard to explain at this point. Maybe it's just, I've psyched myself up to think that's true, but no, energetically, it feels genuinely way too stimulating for me. So, um, I think it's important to work with just one planet at a time, just so you can really feel that like, like another one of my favorite nourishing herbal infusions is say like raspberry leaf. It's also nutritive, but then it's got like that astringent quality to it as well. Uh, just energetically, it feels different. So um, I think if you want to start learning about plants, in addition to consuming just that one planet at a time, as opposed to making it in some sort of formula, it's also good to like, just read about it, you know, mm -hmm. read about that one plant, read about it from different teachers, uh, different, you know, YouTube videos, whatever, and, and just kind of really get this holistic picture of this one particular plant. And then you'll just really start to get to know it intimately. Mm hmm. I think that intimate relationship with a plant, like it's a, it's a real thing. Like yeah. I know I have a few plants where I, I built that intimate relationship and now I can set that plant aside and not use it for a long time. And I might see just a tincture bottle of it or just it on my shelf in a jar. And I can, I don't know if I'm just crazy, but I can absolutely feel that plant and its energy and effects on my body. 
and yeah. that is amazing. <laughs> like, I'm like, is this real? No, I, I feel this. <laughs> this is really real. Ashwagandha is one of those for me. Cool. Um, and it's, it's an herb that has been very, very important to me, especially through quite a bit of my business life <laughs> with my herbal <laughs> products line. Like I needed that stuff. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and, and I could tell when I didn't take it back in those days, cause I'd be I would not be able to handle stress as well. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, look at me breaking down crying. Oh, I haven't taken ashwagandha in a few weeks. <laughs> Maybe I should take some of that. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so um, you sound, you look like you got that face of I'm going to say something. I also, part of that, I think it's important to like listen to what you're drawn to. And I'm thinking back on my Columbines days. It's really interesting to think about the plants that I was drawn to versus like, you know, Howie or Steven would ask about this or that plant. I'm like, I can't remember anything about that plant, you know, uh, but certain plants just really drew me in. And uh, I, I don't know, I don't have an explanation for it, but for whatever reason, we're all drawn to these particular plants. Um, so yeah, it's one thing to like um, go in depth on one particular plant at a time, but I also think it's a good idea to uh, really just listen to what's drawing you in and then to go deep on those plants. Absolutely. That's what reminded me about the ashwagandha. Yeah. If you listen, they will teach you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. Like, yeah, that, that's a, that's a great perspective because they do call you in interesting ways. And I think the the first time I personally ever experienced that was after my first Brighton Bush herbal conference, I <laughs> went on an herb walk with Cascade and I went on an herb walk with Jane Bothwell <clears throat> and I think it was Jane actually who was like the herbs and the plants will will talk to you when you need them I'm like sure okay hippie whatever <laughs> <laughs> like, it was my first herb conference I didn't really know anybody or anything there um and I'd been like studying and taking books and I did an online course and whatever and I just kind of went on a whim and I'm so grateful I did because it was at that moment that I was like boom, these are my people. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. This is my life. And I dove really deep. Right. Um, but anyways, like right after that, I had bronchitis for my first time ever. And it was November after that conference. And I was stuck inside for like three weeks and I'm an outdoors girl. Like I cannot hang without going to hug a tree. And, and I remember just going nuts. And I'm like, Chris, I gotta, I gotta get out of the house. And I was like, I'm going to go for a walk on Salmon River, the same place I was today. And it's like one of my favorite places on the planet. And I couldn't walk for crap. Like I would walk 10 steps and I would just hack my lungs out and I couldn't breathe. And like, I was still really sick. And every time I would stop, I would look down at my feet and there would be lungwort, which I had just learned about also at Brighton Bush. And I'm like, oh, hack, 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 cough, cough, cough. I'm going to try walking more. La -di -da -di -da. 10 more steps doing the same thing. Oh, look, there's lungwort at my feet. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I must have done this like 10 times before I was like, maybe this stuff is talking to me. <laughs> like maybe I should take this home. And, and I took a little bit home and that was my first time trying lung war and I made a little tea of it. And it was my first time I could take a full breath in over three weeks. And I mean, wow. if that wasn't talking to me, <laughs> I don't know what was, it's just so cool the way that kind of stuff happens. And if you open up your, your mind and your soul to listen, it's powerful. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It's one of my, my favorite little stories where I was like, oh, these guys, they really know what's going on. It's it's pretty. Beautiful. I call that like a gateway herb. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> for sure. And that's going to do it for today's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the Herb Rally podcast. If you'd like to hear more from us here at Herb Rally, we now have a text message community, believe it or not. Basically, it's just updates from us. We send about one to seven texts per week, uh, notifying you about new events, videos, courses, podcasts. You get the idea. It's pretty much like our email newsletter, just in text form. So if you'd like to receive text messages from Herb Rally, just text JOIN, that's J-O-I-N, to the number 541-256-2895. Again, that's join to number 541-256-2895.
And to stop receiving texts, that's easy too. Just text STOP to the same number. It'll opt you out immediately. Okay, thanks again for listening. Have a great rest of your day.